Hello and welcome to Edikimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss the current affairs and gazette for today that is 3rd of January 2022. Happy New Year to all the viewers, to all the people who are related to Edikimi's YouTube channel. Before we begin, I would like to wish all the people who are joining us live. Good evening Mithun, good evening to you. First time in the chats, thank you for coming and joining us. Good evening Netra. Hello Bhavani, good evening. Hi Sam. And then we have uh, Kriti, good evening to you. Good evening all of you. And then we have uh, Ashish. Hello Ashish, welcome back. New year, new resolutions. Good evening Vivek, hi Hima. Hi Rachit, good evening, special welcome to you. Netra. And then we have Anonymous, hello Anonymous. All right, great. Let's begin. So, New Year, New Resolutions. But before we begin, yes, Deepa, good evening to you as well. Before we begin, this is a New Year, a time for resolutions to many of us, right? Hi, Shalini, good evening. So, some of you have declared your resolutions, but uh, being happy, studying better than before, these are uh, a little uh, uh, less quantifiable as compared to what can be quantified. What can be quantified is something that one of you presented. I think it was... Uh, mm, I think it was one of you who said exercising five days a week. I think it was Kriti. That is something tangible. So, hi Rachit. Good evening, Ravi. All right. So, Rachit is watching online today because his GS class has been postponed. Good evening, Prabhakar. Good evening to you. All right. Hello, Shalini. Good evening. All right. So, what has been my target for this year, for this coming year, I'd like to share. I have to exercise five out of seven days every week. This is first of it. And I will be putting this on the calendar. Every week I have to do this. Despite the cold weather or uh, hot weather, Corona, I will do it inside my home. This is one. The second one is I will be speaking to my parents every day. Every day. This will cater to my emotional needs. Connecting to my roots. This will cater to my physical needs. And for my mental peace, <laughs> I want to be connected to at least 500 students personally. 500 of you. I have few people here who are online. Some of you are shy enough to write things, but I want to be connected to 500 of you at about the end of this year. So these are my three uh, targets. And this is how I would like you to pick up your targets for this uh, year. And targets can be big, but they can be achieved in smaller proportions. So you can start by saying one and a half hours to current affairs or two hours to current affairs. Isn't that in interesting? Every day evening we meet and towards the end we revise the same. Similarly, place a target of two hours per day for uh, your uh, optional, two hours per day for general studies, something like this. And, and these are personal studies, right? And similarly, some target for your uh, physical fitness, something uh, to cater to your emotional needs, maybe watching a movie, going uh, out with your friends, talking to parents, whatever that suits you, right? So, all right. So, this is what is required, right? And uh, Mithun says uh, their target is to follow Gazette and Cosmos without skipping. Yeah, great. Follow this. Absolutely. Anything and bind yourself to a structure so that it, it you know, uh, it proceeds for you well. So, today's uh, uh, current affairs uh, magazine, uh, today's newsletter is going to get uploaded in a short while. And therefore, today I will, uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you the website itself, right? We'll go ahead with the website and show what is in the news today, right? So let's begin this conversation. And tomorrow, mind you, I would like to have, uh, you know, your uh, updates. What, what are your uh, uh, new year resolutions? I would like to have tangible targets from each of you. People who are watching online and those who are offline as well, you will have to post your targets. I would like to know each of you. You will help me fulfilling the target of 500 of you, right? And I will help you fulfilling the goals, right? Your goals. So, feature news for today is on uh, India-Vietnam relationship, a very important relationship between uh, these two uh, countries, South Asian country and a Southeast Asian country. Here we will understand uh, the history of Vietnam, what has been the reason for this ties between India and Vietnam. It has been 50 years of partnership and 5 years of comprehensive strategic partnership between these two countries. We will understand in detail the kind of engagement both the countries have and the reason for the same, right? So this is the feature news for today. Will be presented in the next video uh, quickly after the first video. New snapshots. The three articles that we have for you today are first on hate speech. Is hate speech, is this word a part of uh, Indian Penal Code on any of the laws? We will study that. So we will understand what is the provision regarding a hate speech in our country and something related to that. 
The second one is an update on economically weaker section quota panel recommendations. So we had studied this in the feature news. We will understand what are the updates and recommendations. The third one is on a battery technology that uh, some Indians are also exploring abroad, but they're going to help a lot in the upcoming days. This day in history dedicated to the wife of Jyotiba Pule, Savitri Bai Pule. She is from Pune, from Maharashtra before independence and worked immensely for uh, female education and the education of those people who were deprived. We will understand more about her in this day in history. Then this day of history. Image of the day is on Earth's closest black hole, right? Just three times the size of Sun. The concepts and terms that we have for today are water taxi service in Mumbai. Interesting. The second one is India's vaccination program for small children and the third one is first nuclear power plant using fourth generation technology. We will understand this. This is by China and the fourth one is China's integration with the Navik. One of you had put, I think Amlan had put this, right, that uh, yes, China and, uh, and India is, you know, they are, they are integrating the technologies. Yes, somewhere they are doing this and this was also questioned. Editorials that we have for today are national security. Uh, program of uh, Pakistan. We will understand what is the new program that Pakistan has revealed just few days back. The second one is on uh, one of the welfare programs, right? Matru Vandana Yojana. Prime Minister's Matru Vandana Yojana. What are the issues related to this plan? And the third one is reforming the foreign tribunals. Today's case is on a company from Taiwan, which you would have heard of. And this company is indulged in something that is not for welfare of the people and therefore its employees and therefore this company has been under scrutiny by Apple itself. Uh, right. So let's begin the conversation. All right. Eva is there. Shall we begin? All right. Let's start this. Questions? Most welcome. We'll address them. So let's start with the snapshot for today. Today's first snapshot is on hate speech. The, uh, the, the PDF will be uploaded in a very short while. It is actually getting created. There are some issues. I don't know, uh, you know, electricity and all those things are there. But yes, we will still go ahead with the conversation today on hate speech right now. This is on the website of Edutemi uploaded and the PDF also will get uploaded here itself. So what is a hate speech? Right. This is this presented as a part of constitution or Indian penal code IPC? No, it is not. So hate speech is a term that is used in common parlance, common usage. But uh, the, the essence of hate speech is that it should not, it should be something that, that causes inflammation, inflammation between two groups, religious groups, social groups, groups of persons, right, with different races, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation or religious belief. This is what is hate speech. So anything that causes any action or any word that has caused enmity or any conflict between two Persons or two communities having different races, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, religious belief, right? So this has been defined as law commission, but there is no term defined as hate speech as such, right? So uh, this is one of the provisions, right? And the IPC, Indian Penal Code says that if a person indulges in any activity like this, which causes an issue between two races or communities, then they will be given some penalty, right? So three years of jail imprisonment imprisonment for those people who are indulging in these, in these activities and five years of jail term for those people who are indulging in these activities and causing differences in uh, religions as well right so conducting if, if they're doing these kind of activities at a place of worship or assembly engaged in religious, religious worship or religious ceremonies if they're doing it here then the there is further aggravation on the penalty, five years of penalty. This is about hate speech, but it has not been put as a part of any penal code, not, not clearly, right? So there is subjectivity here. What is required is to define hate speech in, in Indian penal code. This has also been the recommendation from the law commission, right? So this is one thing. And let me ask you, uh, have we defined a word called as anti-national till now? Do we, have, do, do we have this word present in the constitution anywhere? Any of you? All right. This word has not been placed in the constitution right now. It was placed in the constitution for a, for a very short while in the year 1976. This was, uh, this was, this, uh, this was, I think the 42nd amendment act, I think 
it was in the year 1976 it was introduced for a very short while and then after a year it was also removed this word anti national right so even this is not a part of the constitution so hate speech is in news because of certain inflammatory remarks in uttarakhand a few days back so one must know what constitutes hate speech right is it a part of the constitution what has been the recommendation towards having a hate speech uh, you know subjectivity objectivity in the constitution or penal code right so this is why it is in news now one thing you should note can hate speech be captured online or not good question so uh, there are organizations online media they are responsible if you know if if the social media is responsible for uh, you know the privacy of people then they are also responsible for these kind of incitement of violence incitement of violence between two communities and this can also happen because of hate speeches online speeches right if that is posted online facebook actually recognizes five languages and words that are used in those languages online facebook does it but yes uh, now it is only starting to diversify so around 75% of people speak languages like hindi bengali tamil urdu and english in india overall and these people whatever they put this can be recognized by facebook right so this is an update here but the idea is to actually not only criminalize these kind of things hate speeches but also ensure that there is objectivity here not subjectivity objectivity clear objectivity so this is the first update for you all right so ashish says incitement of hatred might be unintentional done by jokes or memes will it also be included in hate speech very good question very good question so uh, when it says that uh, these kind of words see one there are two provisions here there are two provisions here one is the ipc 505a and the second one is section 153c of ipc their wording is very very similar but certain kind of words cannot be used if you use those kind of words unintentionally or intentionally they should be captured as hate speech you get me so when we when we indulge in these kind of wordings in front of a religious congregation or a religious space it will not be treated as unintentional this is what is a recommendation it should be put in the indian penal code straight away this is for the wordings wording section uh, one of the sections and the other one should be related to uh, uh, you know anything that relates to incitement of violence right so see section 505 of ipc makes it an offense to making statements condu conducing to public mischief right offense making to statements conducing to public mischief so any statement so some examples will have to be given in the ipc these are the kind of statements which must not be used this is one thing and the first one is under section 153a this is about just in in general promotion of enmity through actions through words through speeches so jab bhi dafa lagti hai ipc ki to ek nahi lagti hai na they can be multiple so one will be placed under 153 one could be placed under section 505 of ipc both of it okay so we need objectivity here aise nahi bolna padega enmity is not the only word yeah we have to pray we have to say what exactly was said so that wo cheeze we should not you know speak out in the open kahin nahi bolna hai right okay the second one is the economically weaker section quota panel recommendations we have heard there is all uh, hue and cry around the nation especially relating to around 50000 doctors who are protesting that uh, they be counseling for uh, the neat pg entrances post graduate entrances now when government had uh, laid down the criteria of economically weaker sections 2 years 3 years back 10% so they had said that those people who would be under a specific bracket for example owning a land less than a particular particular entity right owning a house in municipal areas or non notified municipal areas less than a particular limit right it also said certain more things what should be the criteria for earnings earnings less than 8 lakh rupees we have studied this right in a future news so supreme court said we have studied this part also but just quickly revising for you that um, what is the criteria of this how are you placing those people in economically weaker section 8 lakh rupees the same criteria that was used for removal of obc creamy layer from the obc list so the center said central government said we will constitute a committee and tell in details what has been the reason for us doing this they could not respond immediately to supreme court and after constituting a committee that was back in november in december they responded back by saying that the committee has said that 
we can have this 8 lakh criteria we can have this 8 lakh criteria but we will hold some of these criteria as flexible for example if a person owns even more than 5 acre of land 5 acre of land and earlier this criteria was there for exclusion if i own 5 acre of agricultural land i will not be treated as agricultural as a person with uh, economically uh, you know weak backgrounds but now this has been removed also the home criteria the size of the home criteria also has been removed right but another recommendation from the committee is that we will not apply this immediately we will apply this in the next term because if we start applying this right now we do not have data of people people will also have to present these kind of certificates and data and therefore let us not apply this right now this is the update here so um, see there are issues with this also this is what is the issue regarding you know in, you know implementing these kind of populist demands for short term measures there will be litigations against this there will be counter litigations and everything will be hung in the middle now if uh, the the, here, the issue here is that people owning more than 5 acre of agricultural land acre of land they also will be included but the actual people who were poor they will not be included this is one of the issues there could be other issues also. For example, if we are including people with 8 lakh of income, up to 7.5 lakh, if they are treated as economically poor, effectively family income, then people who are actually earning 1 lakh rupee, what is their status? They are far more poor. Should they not have been given this uh, more privilege here? Yes, they should have. So this is called as a weak legislation, right? And this is why there is a lot of issue here, economically weaker section. This is the update for you. This is not something very concrete. You should learn from here. What we should learn from here is not to create a legislation in short time. Short time is an issue. Not to create a legislation without proper consultation. You see, these are the effects of these legislations. And uh, uh, consultations will include uh, pre-legislative consultations. Right? We have conduct we have had a feature article on this. And in fact, a consultation inside the legislature as well. Right? So, uh, this is what we learn from this particular episode of economically weaker section quota panel recommendations. Okay. Okay. Uh, the third one is on a battery technology. See, battery technology has evolved over time. And uh, many of you know, know what are the places from where we import the critical elements for battery, these kind of minerals and metals. So, uh, this is an update on battery technology with some Indians only in USA have started to explore. Okay. So, uh, one of the first inventors of true battery was uh, Mr. Volta, Alessandro Volta in 1800, right? So, uh, when the you know, innovation of battery technology came into being, earlier the technology was, see the principle is very simple, anode, cathode and electrolyte flow of electricity from one terminal to another through a medium. This is what it is, right? But this, I'm just trying to simplify the article for you here, but this technology received a lot of boost in due time firstly if we have a liquid electrolytic solution through which the electricity electricity flows can this be transported to various places no it cannot be transported so developing a medium which can have better transportation this is one requirement to which the the needs were served later solid battery this is a liquid immersed battery then anode and cathode if they are reactive elements then they will get spoiled with time if we have these kind of anode and cathode that, that do not get spoiled with time, then this will be long lasting battery, right? So, there are three essential requirements of a battery, right? And this is how we in initiated lead acid battery. The name itself says acid battery. Acid was the electrolyte. And then we have had lithium battery. What is lithium ion battery? The phone, laptop, pads, right? These panels, if they have batteries, these are lithium ion batteries. This is a solid battery, right? But then there are issues, for example, they, are, they can be used for smaller devices. What about uh, running a car, a vehicle? So these are those kind of devices which can release short amount of energy for prolonged period, for a day. But what if they need more energy, right? So this is why there are some kinds of battery which are beneficial. One, the most important thing is that the cell energy density should be high cell energy density that means smaller the battery it should be able to have a huge amount of energy right this is one so that if a car has to run on battery only a small space is required for the car to have that battery 
राइट सिमिलरली इंजन होता है ना ट्रेन का इंजन सो आउट ऑफ ट्वेंटी बोगीज वन ऑफ दोगीज इंजन इट सेल्फ वन आउट ऑफ ट्वेंटी स्पेस इज कंज्यूम फॉर द इंजन सो वाई कैन 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 नॉट वी हैव वन आउट ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड एनर्जी पावर हाउस इन वन एंड फाइव हंड्रेड बोगीज अलॉन्ग साइड बैटरी लाइक दिस राइट दिस इज वन ऑफ दिंग कॉल्ड एज सेल एनर्जी डेंसिटी अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर एनी बैटरी इज लोअर चार्ज टाइम इट शुड बी एबल टू रीच आर इट वेरी क्विकली राइट so that it can be made use of very effectively in a short time example so these kind of vehicles for example tata nexon vehicle right it can be charged in a matter of 7 to 8 hours through a normal plug right 18 ampere 16 ampere or 20 ampere plug that ac plug 7 to 8 hours it will take is this the time that i will wait for in case i in case i own tata nexon electric vehicle i will not wait for this yes they have a 1 hour sub 1 hour technology also but this installing this technology is very costly so this is the problem lower charge time this is what many companies other companies are also working at and the third one is to have a longer life and improved safety right so less reactions and longer life for the battery many many reversible cycles of charge and discharge and recharge right this is what is required so uh, this is where i would like to share with you uh, one important uh, detail about uh, uh, okay let me just quickly tell you where we import our lithium from we import it from the three south american countries like chile in one written its own constitution right we will discuss that in uh, the coming days in one of the terms so chile and then we have uh, bolivia and argentina am i correct these are the three countries trio from where we import our lithium india is looking forward to importing lithium from these countries by by having the uh, the whole mining fields allocated to it but china is again the leader here right so this is the third update for you people battery technology remember the three criteria and how the whole sequence has evolved with time all right okay so these are the three new snapshot for you this day in history dedicated to one very interesting personality you can always use see savitri bai phule there have been questions on in upsc mains talking about talk about those those female personalities who helped in religious social reformations and also towards the independence of the country or cultural integration of the country who else can you talk about other than a person like savitri bai phule so it is her it is her birth anniversary today 3rd january 1831 she was born it has been 190 years of her birth why was she popular she was the wife of jyoti ba phule both of these people worked immensely towards women empowerment towards the empowerment of the marginal communities they also started she started the first ever school for girls in india first ever school for girls in india balika din right so pre ka question ban sakta hai and mr jyoti bai phule he also started what satya shodhak samaj right truth seeking society right so they also install uh, initiated uh, mahila seva mandal where women would gather and raise awareness about women's rights right during those times we are talking of the 19th century almost 200 years back imagine this is what was the status in uh, in and around pune so great no yes absolutely correct for education and uh, they also work for Uh, the education of the lower and marginalized sections right so dalit and lower caste women as well all right great attempt great remarkable and they keep on coming in the news every time or the other you keep you have to have some knowledge about them and then you see you have to have some knowledge and then you see that it will get utilized every time so ek baar build karo and then you see how it will help you throughout all right today is uh, image of the day is on the closest black hole to earth it is also called as unicorn unicorn ke bahut sare matlab hai one of the one of the matlab of unicorn is uh, uh, a startup company a newly initiated company which is valued 1 billion dollar plus correct and then uh, unicorn also is one of the imaginary figures right a horse with a thing right and uh, unicorn this has been called as a unicorn this is the black hole which has been found very close to earth right just 1500 light years although they have called it at just 1500 light years but one light year is itself very 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 long distance light year is the what is light year light year one light year is the time it takes for light to travel in a year so 3 lakh kilometers per second into 
whatever is the time it takes you know for a year to happen so one second one year will have 365 days and then we will have uh, 24 hours in it 24 hours will have 60 minutes and then 60 seconds into 3 lakh this is 1 lakh year and we are talking of 1500 light years can you imagine we are calling it as a close distance this is the distance we are talking of the distance between earth and this black hole and this is being called as closed because because the universe itself is unimaginably vast that is the reason and uh, this is itself uh, uh, um, uh, a black hole which is just three times the size of our sun which is our sun is also not a very very big star so uh, yes this is the update from here this day in history and image of the day what are the terms for today so uh, Nitra says she has been the first female teacher in India great nice to know what are taxi services in Mumbai see let me show this through the this illustration itself Mumbai city has Bay Area right and similarly there are many other cities in south which have Bay Area so when you talk of a city which has uh, creeks right which has got Bay Area and uh, people will have to travel huge distances to travel from the marine drive or the south mumbai kolaba region to navi mumbai or you know other sides of uh, mumbai can they not take uh, a ferry can they not take a water taxi yes now they can and this reduces the time for travel completely if you have traveled from gateway to elephanta there is another route that starts from gateway and it this is of uh, uh, the you know what are uh, the taxis only and they take one one person from gateway to alibag directly to alibag and this distance would get reduced from around two to three hours to hardly 45 minutes enjoying all that time watching uh, the, you know the in the naval uh, base here and jnpt close by Jawaharlal nehru port trust huge vessels and also a very scenic ride and not to not to just reduce the fact to that uh, marine transportation is a lot more cheaper it is more environmental friendly as compared to the conventional mode of transportation right so it has got many many advantages which now these marine taxis will be able to utilize what are taxi services in mumbai right if you can afford it why not good example for you to present right okay the second one is an update on India's vaccination program. Now we have started to, we will start, in fact, I think tomorrow is the day, the registrations for vaccination of children will start. Uh, aged 15 to 18 years, go vaccine, right? The third one is world's first nuclear power plant using fourth generation HTGR. HTGR stands for high temperature gas reactor. So even during high temperatures, this complete setup will be durable. It will not melt under duress and there will be no risk of no risk of radiation melts right so china has initiated this reactor and china also china also is largely dependent on conventional energy only coal right now china also is initiating more nuclear more water conventional water nahi, uh, new forms of water energy and solar etc energy but china also has been dependent largely on coal right so china is one of the leaders of course and it is going to develop this technology as well all right plant score technologies were all domestically developed with 94 percent of the material used in the plant domestically sourced see india is importing this technology and mineral resource from countries like usa russia france right countries are helping india build its nuclear reactors but china is building it by itself this so shows this depicts the kind of prowess in technology that china has innovation we will understand this in uh, the uh, feature news as well today, right? Why Vietnam is developing? What is the competitive advantage of Vietnam over India? A smaller country, right? Having lesser GDP, lesser population, but still doing far better than India. We will understand. And this is because of all China, right? So China's integration with Navic. What is happening here is that Oppo, Oppo, another company, right? OnePlus, Oppo, Vivo, they are all, you know, integrated into one whole, right? They are company, sister companies, sort of uh, organizations. So they have, uh, a, you know, initiated a MOU, Memorandum of uh, uh, Understanding between ISRO and Oppo has been initiated. And what they want to do is exchange some data from Navic to Oppo's devices, Oppo's devices to be used in our uh, capacity in, in our regional capacity so when you look at this map 
it talks about the seven Navik satellites, the constellation of seven satellites. Now, out of these seven, four of them are in geosynchronous orbits and three of them are in geostationary orbits. Geostationary. What is the prime difference between geostationary and geosynchronous? Do you people know? So, both of them are placed in an orbit which is at the height of 36,000 kilometers above the Earth. 36,000 kilometers above, right? And um, GSLV, PSLV rockets are used to launch them at this height. And they will always remain at this height only. If they are geo, if they are geostationary orbits, they will be stationary. They will not move. There will be three satellites placed, one directly overhead, one a little inclined and the third one also little inclined. They will not move. They will always be located at this place for all the times to come. So, this place has been blocked. Similarly, if other countries also place geostationary satellites at this height, this altitude, the place will be blocked. And this is called a space jamming. The space just like, you know, um, roads are also getting jammed because of these satellites. Not India's. America has got 24 of these satellites. What to do? China has got its own system. European Union has got its system. Japan has got its own system. Russia has got its own. What to do? So, this is one. And then we also have a set of four more satellites. They are geosynchronous orbits. Geosynchronous means that they will be synchronous with the Earth, with India at a particular time. So, they will be moving around the whole Earth in the form of eight and at particular time they will be on India and they will ensure that they will be here at a particular time. So, this is what the other four satellites are doing. They will be integrating, ensuring that and no place is left unmarked, right, through the help of uh, these satellites and not only one satellite there will be multiple satellites which will be eyeing one place right and now OPPO has uh, had an MOU with these uh, uh, with ISRO so that it can have some data from these satellites so that OPPO devices can be utilized here right it is in controversies now because India does not want to use those kind of uh, devices which are which are not there is a technical word what is that those kind of satellites or those kind of uh, te technologies which have not been Credible, right? We have used a particular term for this. R Ravi says reduce carbon footprint in relation to uh, the water taxis in Mumbai. Great, nice. Okay, good keyword to use. Just like, see, just like Google has keywords to use, these are your keywords. If you use these kind of keywords on Google, some of the other entities, websites will crop up. And those websites will crop up first, which have used the keywords. Similarly, if you use the keywords, these keywords, then your answer will get that particular rating as compared to other answers. Okay. Maybe some of you are a little new in preparation, but you will come to know what is the meaning of keyword later. If you're not noting right now, then you will come to know. Now, this is the national security policy. This is the first editorial for today. This is on national security policy of Pakistan. All right. This was revealed by Pakistan itself in the last week of December by Imran Khan, their prime minister. And this, the public, the public uh, portion of it has not been released just like our gazette. There is a gazette of the government. It releases what is the government policy. They have not revealed it as of now. But yes, some declarations have been made. So let us understand what has been the main agenda of Pakistan, where it wants to flow now. What is the initiative? First of all, this is the first ever national security policy. Pehli bar Pakistan ne bolae ki hum security pe kaam karenge. Chalo, theek hai, karo. So, uh, in ka security aspect kya hai? So, they have been focusing till now on military. But this security reform that they are talking of, national security policy, this will include terrorism, it will include security, it will, it will include economy, it will include demography, water, right? and foreign relations as well. So many aspects of security. Yes, why not? When we talk of security, see, aapke bhi SMA topic, topic mein, if the question of security comes, military security is not the only thing that you will place. Security has got various dimensions. What about energy security? What about water security? What about security from uh, pollution? Can you tell me some more aspects of security? Right? And when you diversify an answer like this, in say suppose essay or suppose a topic of uh, you know GS paper 3 when they talk about security yes you got to talk about those important uh, pointers as well of uh, syllabus of uh, uh, paper 3 but including wider dimensions even in small entities they will be helpful 
so this policy also for pakistan becomes more holistic but see what pakistan has done till now editorial itself says this has been written by an ifs officer he says that uh, till now pakistan has had its military agenda on top for the country military agenda for military is not on priority military agenda for the country is on priority the military has had many opaque policies countries resources are at disposal all the countries you know their currency is at disposal for their military resources so this is one prime concern plus they are not ready to scrutinize when they are using the finances what is the issue about it because of all this because of all this th this reformation must include the aspect where the military is not treated at higher echelon at a higher sphere than economy than the reformation in the country what pakistan has done right now till now is that it has followed a policy where uh, military has got its prime significance and and there is an you know there is an effect that has been created editorial itself says that military uh, is trying to defend pakistan from a country like india and that is why military needs these kind of disposables but actually the editorial itself says and there have been people in pakistan itself saying that pakistan military is defending nobody but itself in the last uh, 40 50 years pakistan has got various clouds right in spheres of influence and one important source of influence is military another source of influence is the malvis another source of influence in pakistan are the politicians but not as much right another source of influence is uh, isi which is linked with the military right and then we also have taliban as a source of influence in pakistan we also have another source of influence which is cia in pakistan huge fundings for them right huge fundings for other authorities with the help of cia but military has been on the top right so military has been defending itself in the last 50 60 years which it should know more in national security policy right the the focus should be on development of commerce development of economy pakistan has been de dependent on a country like china for defense they just procured the j10 no j10 aircraft from china so people are saying that it is not pakistan which has procured this uh, squadron of j10 around 30 aircraft but china has initiated a base for itself in pakistan see because pakistan cannot afford this level of economy this is the point uh, uh, you know that the editorial also makes that china is now making pakistan dependent on it through china pakistan economic corridor right instead of this pakistan should initiate commerce and trade with country like india which is its larger neighbor this is in the long term interest of pakistan that pakistan becomes self dependent and initiates trade now this is something which pakistan did not do after the abrogation of article 370 it stopped all the trade with india trade is not much trade is just a few billion dollars five seven billion dollars most of it is illegal but still this is something that uh, pakistan should look at right another issue that is linked here is the extremist group in pakistan which have allied with political elites so because of this they legitimize even the illegitimate things something that india questions inside in our own country there is a debate but in pakistan the there are a lot of assassinations happening because of this this is the update about pakistan's national security policy Okay. state schemes see these are good editorials you should read although i have told the whole summary but yes you could read this one now the second one is on um, the state schemes that can cast a lifeline to the welfare plan can some schemes be such that they can uh, cast a lifeline to welfare plan yes why not we do have such schemes one of those schemes one of those schemes is pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana through this the mother will get cashless benefits in case she goes for institutional deliveries in case she goes for regular checkups after the checkups some money will be put in her account great scheme but what if the mother is not able to register online another issue here one issue here right what if the disbursement of funds is not happening on time such a sin against the people of the country so these things have to be amended appended so that uh, you know we cast a lifeline through some of the welfare plan to the people right this will also achieve sustainable goal development goal for our country right okay so editorial here you can click here right so that you are able to read an editorial like this the third one is on 
the reformation of foreign tribunals let me see if you people are saying something rajat says bye sir i'm going for the lean sir class will watch the recording later sure rajat see you ravi says uh, internal ashish food yes food security kriti says critical infrastructure security deepak says cyber security bhavani says dumping do you mean anti dumping or dumping of uh, economic goods in other country yes security against dumping as well yes okay great that you people are here so any any questions please put them here this third editorial you know, is on reforming the foreign tribunals right now foreign tribu any tribunal is initiated india has got india has got tens of tribunals right so armed forces tribunals water tribunal and then uh, we have central administrative tribunal right in case when you get into civil services and you fall into some issues then your case will be referred to cat right so they have innumerable tribunals and these tribunals assist the functioning of a court they are quasi courts they are some of them are given the powers of court civil court so that they can conduct investigations research right investigations but uh, are the judgments of tribunals uh, you know patthar ki lakir are, are those those judgments which are uh, which have to be there all the time no what has happened in one of the cases is that hasina bhanu case this uh, you know one of the tribunals foreign this tribunal foreign tribunal this tribunal said that this lady has been an indian citizen this tribunal accepted her as an indian citizen but later the tribunal changed its stance saying that she was a foreigner so um, what does it constitute what does it tell about a tribunal it can change its stance these are the cases where uh, the high court also has got powers to refer right so the high court itself guwahati high court has said that the that the foreign tribunal issues only opinion and not a judgment see these are quasi places to ensure that there is a speedy justice right many of the procedures are not followed yet they try to ensure that justice is provided and yes in cases where there are problems then the high court also takes charge people people have got the right to rights individuals under the constitution i have if i am an indian i have got the right to have right right what is that right that is article 32 right it says that people should have their own rights article 32 and article 226 right under the uh, high court first one is under supreme court and the second one is under high court right so people have got this right to have uh, rights and there are some rights that are also meant for the people who are non citizens right people who are residents of the country so uh, this is the update about this uh you know the editorial the editorial says that these tribunals are created by the central government or the government itself and therefore these tribunals are prone sometimes they are prone to provide those kind of judgments which are not which are not uh, in favor of the individual right so see punitive state action such as detention or deportation right excessive executive control over appointments and conditions of service in these tribunals right and skewed procedures have created a situation in which tribunals are incentivized to declare the individual as foreigner right so this is not doing justice to the uh, person right so this is the update from here okay the last one is the case study for today which is on providing basic right to employees and before we get into this if you like this initiative if you like our effort to share some love on us through likes comments and shares if you subscribe to the channel you will receive timely updates for these kind of interesting videos right so today is the case is on uh, uh, the basic right to employees right so a company foxconn right taiwan company it has been uh, initiated under a procedure from apple itself detailed scrutiny of this company so that you know uh, scrutiny is conducted into if it treated its employees not uh, in not a good manner right so this is one of the examples in which these are two examples one a company not treating its employees the way it should something that we should learn from right and another example which is the example which we want to present here highlighting the case where a company superior which has outsourced so apple has outsourced some of its work to this taiwanese company and when taiwani company has got contract employees working with it who are not getting proper living conditions of work not getting wages on time right there are many factors which are not working well for them then this company is liable and and apple will sue a company like this or will ensure that the contract with this company ends 
right so this is the example of corporate social responsibility of a company which tries to not only project itself as a good company but it follows its values right service so when people protest for basic rights there is government intervention this intervention has been from the private company itself which is a very good case for uh, you to look at foxon has issued apology and are taking steps to enhance the facilities and service restructuring our local management team how good is it amazing great work great work right so code for today is democracy good governance and modernity cannot be imported or imposed from outside the country it should be an integral part democracy good governance modernity cannot be imported or imported imposed from outside the country and it is not only ap applicable for a country it is applicable for an individual also right if we are democratic from within it is not something that has to be brought to be brought out from outside good governance initiatives although this is a term that is used for a government but it applies equally to us how if you look at fundamental duties are we following each of them right this is the question that we ask to ourselves and anything else these are not imposed from an outside and when we when we follow this from inside this is called as integrity right so uh, this is where we quickly wrap up this uh, session and uh, if you like this initiative do share some love because this is the your conversations with me are the love that we receive right your input is what we work on and we try to initiate better systems for you right the uh, the pdf will be uploaded very shortly and we will quickly meet in the second video for the featured news for today india vietnam relations lots of perspectives but we will quickly understand in totality what's happening between india vietnam and around right so if there are questions there are inputs please put them here in case there are suggestions we are ready for inputs and feedback also your your love is in the form of your comments your likes right to this channel and this video thank you for being a part we will quickly move to the second video thank you for watching thank you kriti thank you netra thank you everybody your inputs most welcome prepare short notes